We're back for part two. Even though it represented some extra hassle, I decided I would take this grinder down to bare metal before painting. To be honest, a basic cleaning alone would have been helpful, but most of the painted surfaces were in pretty rough shape anyway, although I have to give credit where it's due, whatever paint remained was quite tenaciously stuck to the surface. For paint removal, I find a combination of coarse knotted wire wheels work the best. Interestingly, as I was merrily grinding away, I kept catching a whiff of burned bacon. No idea why. Paint removal is somewhat dull, repetitious work. And as I was working along, I was pondering the meaning of it all. Like, all the things. Like, how I was using a grinder to clean a grinder grinding away old paint using a grinder, and how paint removal itself was a grind. So basically a grinder grinding grinder grinding on grinding a grinder. Yeah, I had to shut that down before I ripped a hole in the fabric of space and killed us all. You're welcome. Getting down inside the center of the column was impossible with power tools, but I was able to at least knock off most of the rust and crud with a wire brush. For the insides of the grinder, I'm using a product called Coral Seal. It's a rust converting metal primer that goes on white, but it quickly turns purple as it converts the rust iron oxide on the surface into iron magnetite, which is a stable substance that doesn't oxidize any further. That sounded all sciencey and made me feel smart, but no, I didn't come up with that myself. I read it off the company's product website. After Coro Seal completely dries, it turns black and seals up the surface. For paint on this project, I'm using something I haven't used before. This is MRO Industrial Enamel by Seymour Paints. It is a high solids paint, which I'm hoping will give me a much thicker coating and therefore a coating that lasts longer and maybe is easier to apply and has fewer runs. Everything that I was painting got two fairly heavy coats of primer. This is definitely heavier than I would have applied a regular primer, but I have to say that even after applying it fairly heavy and maybe only waiting 30 minutes between coats, I had zero runs, so I was pretty impressed with this performance. The top coat that I'm using is from the same company, and it has the rather ostentatious and extravagant name of Gray. It is number 620-1416. It is almost the same color as the primer, which is actually a good thing, as minor scratches won't be as noticeable. Before I began using a wire wheel to clean some of the smaller pieces, I thought to myself, put on some gloves. Nah, I replied in my head, I'll just be extra careful. And right there is where my extra careful and the wheel got me. Left me with some pretty deep scratches that took more than a week to heal. Yes, I'm a dummy. 
but at least I did put on gloves for the rest of the cleaning. I had masked off the nameplates and such on the motor housing with some tape, but I did want to get all of the paint removed and I couldn't get quite close enough with the wire wheel. So I just went around with a single-edged razor blade and scraped off anything else that I had missed. As I mentioned in part one, the grinder was missing the tool rest and support bracket on the left hand side. I feel like I need to issue a disclaimer here. I am not a metal worker. Historically, if I had to do metal working and it required more than a hacksaw or a hammer, I was just plain out of luck. If you are a metal worker or a machinist and are easily triggered, probably best to look away now. Fair warning. I did manage to find a tool rest on eBay, but it came without the support bracket. I decided I would give a go at making a replacement one myself with nothing more than my extensive skill set and a well-equipped metalworking shop. I started out with a section of hot rolled steel that was one quarter inch thick. I used a sharpie and a scratch awl to mark out the basic shape and then used a cutoff wheel in my grinder to rough out that shape. You know, the grinder grinding on a grinder. The grinder that no, 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 stop. Must not continue. Funny thing about shaping metal by carving little bits off at high speed where friction has heated those bits to the melting point and the wheel slings them off at bullet velocities glowing like the surface of the sun. Um, actually, I don't know exactly where I was going with this, but yeah, those sparks are super hot. Here's a pro tip. Don't wear shorts while doing metal grinding where those hot grinding bits are hitting the floor and bouncing all over the place? Also, don't ask me how I know about that. I got as close to the line as I could using the grinder and got the basic shape hogged out okay but it still needed a lot of refining, and for that I just turned to my bench grinder. Yes, the bench grinder that I already had. The bench grinder that I already had and therefore probably didn't need another bench grinder. Yeah, 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 I know, yeah. Despite my years, and I do mean years of experience using a bench grinder uh, to do things like honing the edge of lawnmower blades, I was not able to get this bracket perfect using the bench grinder alone. So I had to resort to using some hand tooling. What I ended up with is a fairly close approximation of the other side tool rest support bracket. 
I, it's not a bad job. It's not perfect when I look at it. I can tell that there's a few mistakes that I made, but it'll work and it'll certainly be better than no support bracket. In installment three, I will put this thing back together and we'll get some nice closing tool porn shots. That's what you've been waiting for. I know it. Don't deny it.